All right, we've reached the last element on uh, BJT design questions. That's short base transport. So let's dive right in. Um, here's what I had just shown where we have a polysilicon emitter. And now we're going to look at effects of a graded junction and a graded, sorry, a graded base. Uh, just here as a reminder, um, in the previous section we looked at introducing a polysilicon, which has a finite surface recombination velocity. And um, we're, we're starting now to look at an, uh, uh, grading the base and having uh, looking at effects of the base. So, what if the base becomes really short? Then I have something similar to uh, what I had shown here uh, for the emitter side. Okay, so if the base comes really short and um, you have again these terms similar to what we had on, on this side here where we assume that this surface velocity is smaller than the diffusion velocity in the uh, emitter, we have something similar. We have a, effectively a diffusion of velocity here in the base. Okay, so what if that velocity becomes uh, comparable to this thermal velocity that can be sustained? What if this velocity becomes so large that it wants that we it can't really drop to zero given the boundary condition, meaning the velocity or the current that you would require to drive it would be too high. Therefore, you dominate it by the thermal velocity in the base. So you can't drive that much current uh, with this short base. So that means the diffusion velocity would become too large. It would become larger than the thermal velocity and this N2 value becomes larger than zero. As long as the base is long, as long as the diffusion uh, velocity is smaller than the thermal velocity, it'll go to zero. But if the carriers just can't move that fast, they can't diffuse that fast, then your N2 becomes finite. Now you can do the same math of what all we did for the poly emitter and do it here again. Okay? So you write down an expression for the emitter current that now includes a finite value now at the end of the base junction like this for the electrons. And you include the base width, which is here, right, WB, and you have the diffusion coefficient dn. Same thing as what we just did in the previous section. And you can derive the same equivalent expression. Look, this is, look, this guy here is the same ratio as what we had up here. Okay? All right. So we can calculate, again, the effect of having uh, the device becoming ballistic, meaning it's the diffusion uh, velocities are. Um, are larger than the thermal velocity, so we're basically starting to shoot through the structure and we're limited by the thermal velocity of the structure. All right, so we do the same game of comparing um, our final design. What does our final beta really depend on if we had a ballistic uh, short base polysilicon transistor? Okay, so I'm after uh, the ratio of my, what I'd really want to understand is what's my beta going to be if I have this design. But I want to compare it based on the numbers that I had before to derive an expression that drives the dependence on this ratio here. So this is what I'm after finally, but I'm going to expand it out again in the usual way of introducing these coefficients here, right? And I, where these are identical, right? So I didn't change anything in this expression. I just introduced coefficients, but now 
the ratios that I have plotted here in these different shades, I know what these ratios are. So let me plug them in. Right, we just did the base silicon to base poly. We did that in the previous section when we talked about a poly emitter. That's this expression. I just had on this slide here, on the previous slide, I derived this expression. That's this guy, right? Here. And this green is what we had all along, okay? As if we didn't have a ballistic transport, as if we didn't have poly, and the terms on the edges are the dressing that changed the whole configuration. And we're trying to figure out, at the end, what are we left with? What are the design parameters left in this space when we have a short base and a polysilicon emitter? Okay, let's do this. So again, we're assuming that the surface velocity here uh, in the poly is small compared to the diffusion velocity. Okay? So that gets us um, a term dp, dp, and we, we. So we get rid of that. Okay? We'll also assume that the thermal velocity is small compared to the diffusion velocity. We just did that in the previous assumption, right? So I'm going to cancel this term here. All right. If I do that, dn dn, wb, wb. There's not a whole lot left. That's the expression I get. So beta turns into something that is now just doping of the emitter, doping of the base, and some material properties that we don't necessarily have good control over. The thermal velocity is a property of silicon. We can make the silicon as clean as we want, and then we corrupt it a little bit in the base with doping. But of course, we're going to keep the doping low anyways, as much as low as we can without having all these other detrimental effects. We can ramp up the emitter um, doping, but not too high, because we have band gap narrowing effects. And this Vs, the saturation velocity in the poly, you may have some control over that. I'm not actually sure how much control you have over it. That's a very practical question. Now, there is not a whole lot left if you have a ballistic short-term BJT on optimizing this. Okay? So, if you have large devices, finite diffusion lengths, small diffusion velocity, uh, the thermal velocity is large. You can ne neglect uh, this diffusion velocity, okay? But if you're in very short devices, then you need to consider these uh, terms, the relative sizes. And um, you, in a quasi-ballistic transport, you, you basically are stuck with this. You can't do a whole lot more optimization. All right. So that concludes the section 25 on design aspects of the BJT. I'll see you in the next section where we talk about AC response. Thank you.